Hi everyone, it's Chris again out and about training for the kilt walk in April, but I thought what I might do as I'm doing these wee excursions over the next couple of months is do a wee series of short kind of data bursts on topics to do with Scottish genealogy. Uh, just to share a wee bit of knowledge about some of the things that you might be encountering with your research. So I'm going to start with birth records on this one. And basically the civil registration of births in Scotland starts in January of 1855 and you have to register the birth of a child within eight days or the law's coming after you. So, <laughs> so the children have to be registered. Um, the, the details of the birth certificate include things like the name of the child, uh, where and when it was born, the sex of the child, and the names of both parents, the informant, and of course where and when it was registered. But there was one extra detail included in most birth certificates in Scotland, which you won't find in England, Wales and Ireland and that's actually the, the date of marriage of the parents if they were married. So, now there's a slight exception to that, in that in the first year of civil registration in 1855, there was actually a lot more information included in the certificates, and the poor wee registrars were getting writer's cramp trying to record it all, so it had things like the birthplaces of the, the two parents, how many children they already had, that kind of thing. So it ends up in 1856 that they decided they were asking for too much information and got rid of a lot of the detail. And one of the details they got rid of was the date of marriage. But that's reinstated from 1860 onwards, so you won't find it in the first five years of um, the, the records. Or at least you will in 1855, but then for the next few years it's missing. So, if the parents were married, then the child was legitimate. Um, and there was nothing, no problem whatsoever, you know, recording the, the record. If the child was illegitimate and the father had to give his permission for his name to be recorded in the record, and if the child um, was illegitimate, it would actually have the word illegitimate written under his name or her name, and that continued up until 1919. But the father had to attend the registration of the, the child along with the mother if the child was illegitimate, if he wanted to have the, the child have the father's surname recorded. So sometimes you'll see that the child will actually be recorded under the mother's surname if the, the child was in fact illegitimate. So it's just when you're searching you might sometimes want to look under both surnames of the mother and the father. If the child was illegitimate, sometimes the, the mother and the, and the mother's family would take the putative father to, to court. And so on the left hand side of a, of a record you might see the thing saying view RCE, view the register of corrected entries. And if you do, that points to a second document and that includes potential information about who the father was if he's been prosecuted and found liable for the upkeep of the child in one of the courts. So that's something else just to be aware of as well, as there might be a second document. Now the records themselves are actually available on the Scotland's People website, which is scotlandspeople.gov.uk and it's a pay-per-view website that I'm sure you've used before. Now, one of the other things that you might sometimes come across with birth records is occasionally on Scotland's people you might find that there's actually details of the child's vaccination included in the first column or the first second column. Now the reason for that is that in fact there were actually two copies of the birth registers recorded and what happened was that one copy was held locally by the, the registrars and the other copy was transmitted centrally to the General Register Office in Edinburgh. The locally held copy from 1863, when the Scottish Vaccination Act was passed, doubled up as a vaccination register. And so what happened was the, the child had to be vaccinated at that point for within a period, I think it was three months or six months, top of my head, I can't remember what the period was, but the child had to be vaccinated against smallpox. And this carried on right up until the 1940s when the NHS was um, set up. But basically, if the child was vaccinated, then it would say uh, vaccinated and give the date of it. If the child couldn't be vaccinated, it would say insusceptible in that first column. And it might also be the case that the vaccination was postponed. And there may be problems why the child couldn't be vaccinated straight away. So it might be postponed, but eventually it should have been included. Now, what's that got to do with Scotland's people? Well, when they digitised the records of births for Scotland's people, they used the centrally held copies based in Edinburgh, which don't include the vaccination information, but they did pull in some copies from local registration and offices where there might have been problems with the ones held in Edinburgh. So when that happened, you will see the vaccination information included on the document, but it will be scored out 
So it's just it's a wee Brucey bonus that sometimes you might find um, is the fact that the child was vaccinated and there's details included of that. So I'm trying to think, is there anything else I can tell you about birth records? There's usually three entries to a page on Scotland's people. Um, so keep an eye out for things like twins, that sort of thing. From the 1960s, I think it was, it goes to one entry per page. And then uh, the information is pretty much the same. You know, it kind of remains fairly standard for most of the period. So I hope that's a, a useful wee introduction to Scottish birth records. Um, when I get my breath back and out on another day, I might talk to you about marriage records because that's a whole different ball, uh, sort of kettle of fish and a lot more fun. Okay, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.